These are two uh, hybrid stepper motor drivers that I purchased and on the face of it they look very similar from the outside. Uh, the only difference is that this one has got a plastic case and it has um, just motion control logo on there. This one is completely unbranded and no means of telling where it comes from. Uh, this one has got a code of some sort and a barcode on the bottom. Um, that's my sticker. Um, this has got a, a code on the bottom as well. It is possible if you look on the internet to find the factory that made these but it's absolutely impossible to find anything about that. Um, the four drivers that I'm running with on the mill at the moment are the same as this and they all work fine. Um, I did buy one because I had a problem and, and one of the drives failed because I had a short and um, I replaced it with one which was uh, slightly different colour anodizing and as it turned out the internals were completely different and I assumed that when I bought these that this and this and the other one that I had would all have the same electronics inside but that proved not to be the case and I could show you by opening these up Right, I've opened them both up now and um, you can see that the two boards, although they have some similarities, are different in their layout and different in the chips and where they're placed. And the only thing they conform to is that the dip switches and the RJ45 connectors are in the same place and all the connectors here are the same on both boards and I think it's com common to all the boards as far as I can see. Um, the other thing is the input power comes in at this end of the board and on this one there is some circuitry that uh, protects uh, from short circuits because this fuse here didn't blow when I uh, had a short circuit. This one has a glass fuse and that had blown so I just was able to take that off the board desolder it and solder on a new one without too much difficulty and that now restores this one into working condition um, the dip switch positions perhaps just worth showing those are the positions that I have run with and seem to be fine see which ones are which from there. There's no need <coughs> as far as I can tell to be able to use the there's no need to use the RJ45 port and try and set things up on here. Um, it's th the thing is set up to be as um, simple to use and self adjusting as possible um, and seems to be excellent as far as I can tell. The um, stepping is very, very smooth. Um, the steppers are very powerful. Um, and um, the closed loop part of it with the encoder makes a huge difference. Um, <coughs> the cover is the connections that are printed on. Uh, the power supply is 20 to 80 volts, um, and that's alternating current. Uh, so obviously, there's no polarity to that. Um, and uh, the motor connections are shown here um, and the uh, motors have also got on them a label which shows um, which colours are to go to which, which, po which poles of the motor. Now the reason that I had uh, a short circuit, it's difficult to believe, but it was using <coughs> this particular waterproof connector uh, to connect up the lines which are only short that come off the motor um, and somehow when this screw was adjusted up it caused a short between there 
and there. There's nothing that I could see that was touching. Um, I, I even cut one of these apart to have a look and couldn't see any way it could connect, but anyway, it did. And there was a short in there, um, and that was what um, caused the fuse to blow in one of these. So I got myself, obviously, a spare um, stepper board, um, and also um, I, I bought another motor just to be on the safe side. Unfortunately, with these, um, I can see that they, they're going to go out of use quite quickly and be replaced with other units. Um, and they're currently all done the same way at the moment, um, but who knows in the future how things will change. Um, I notice on looking on the internet that there are seven different types of closed loop steppers for, for the NEMA. 34 motors. Uh, there's one with a gold case, uh, one with a plastic case, which is this one, uh, one deep blue anodized, which is this one, one light blue anodized, which I had and which blew components in it when it shorted, one black uh, made by Long Motor Company, and a white grey one um, by Leadshine. The motors all appear to be lead shine motors as far as I can see um, and they all seem to be the same motor um, so clearly they, that shouldn't pr present a problem and keeping one as a spare is a good idea because I notice that lead shine on their website have got quite a lot of um, information about legacy products which is a sign that they expect things to go out of use. Right, I'll now take a quick look in the back of the um, uh, in the back of the, the um, uh, I'll now look in the back of the instrument box and I can show you in there uh, that the power supply is a simple transformer which has got no additional parts and one of the things I found with that was um, it had a inrush power which caused problems uh, to my RCD to start with just tripping it um, and then eventually causing it to fail altogether. So it's a good idea to fit a large size thermistor in series on the uh, live line coming into the, un into the unit, into the coil uh, of the transformer uh, so that the inrush current is smoothed out. Um, and um, the large thermistor I have is a uh, 35 amp, 240 volt uh, inrush uh, thermistor and seems to work well. When I switch on now it no longer causes the lights to flicker um, and uh, doesn't affect the RCD. I originally fitted one to uh, a spot welder I'd made um, which had the same problem and of course much worse uh, because I was firing off lots of um, bursts of current um, and that solved the problem. This is the view inside my equipment box and this is the transformer that produces 60-65 volts um, of alternating current and this black <coughs> round piece here is the thermistor that um, it softens the inrush current <coughs> and it costs very little, um, easy to obtain and doesn't seem to have any downside to having it fitted. And then I can show you up here where all of the uh, drives are fitted. I've got four here because I've got a, an A-axis on this machine. And now this seems to all be functioning perfectly. It's perhaps just worth mentioning uh, the lack of any documentation when you get uh, these stepper drivers. Very difficult to find anything at all, even on the internet. 
but I did find on Lead Shine's uh, website uh, one which I couldn't find uh, or listed for sale, um, which is very similar to the kind of generic, very similar to the generic one that I bought. So whether mine's made by Lead Shine or not, I have no idea. Um, and this has um, a little bit of description. Um, it's something there about what happens if things go wrong and the overcurrent protection. And then a little bit about the specification of matching motors. And then separately to that, <coughs> I found a software operational manual on Lead Shine's website again. Um, and it has how to set up and use the uh, software, um, which you can then interrogate the controller. But to be honest, there's absolutely no need to do so. And I am just going to use mine as it is. I shan't e even think about using that. And the other thing I think I'll perhaps just show you is the uh, stepper motors. <coughs> this is typical of the motors that are sold. And you can see it says model um, 86HSE4N, that's uh, 4 Newton, BC38. Uh, it gives the leads and their colours. That's the leads here at the end and what they're supposed to be connected to and the encoder leads which are in here and this is a funny plug with hundreds of pins most of which aren't used let's move it a bit closer to the camera uh, it's a, a very big pinage on there and I'm not quite sure why they use that perhaps there's a big supply of them I don't know but anyway it tells you there what the colours are um, for that to wire that in um, and when you buy them, they come with an extension lead um, at, with a socket on the end, with a plug on the end that fits that. With this one, um, I bought extra cabling um, because I found that was needed. Um, the only amendment I had to make to the stepper motor was take out the uh, key out of the keyway, but well, that's all. Um, these are very solid, robust motors that um, have got a lot of power, even though this is only a 4 Newton one, and the one on my Z drive is 12 Newtons. Um, that is really overkill. I never really should have needed as much as that. I bought this motor specifically at 4 Newtons because I wanted it as short as possible, so that I've got the least amount of interference in the workshop. And clearly these have a, an encoder at the end that uh, that is wired through one of these leads here um, and um, provides the information to the controller to know where the position of the spindles and works exceptionally well. It's so much better than the stepper motors that I had in my mini mill. Um, so I hope that's of some help to you. Just to reiterate again, for goodness sake, don't use these um, for connecting um, the extra bits of lead for the motor drive. Uh, those are just not um, fit for purpose. Um, if you can get a short without knowing why, then uh, they definitely need to be avoided. Um, and that's all really that I need to say, except I think it's a good idea to buy one spare um, controller board and one spare motor just in case they get changed in the future.